In this tutorial, we're going to be doing some more JavaScript array method practice by completing some practical exercises. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to another tutorial where we're going to be doing some more exercises based on JavaScript array methods. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates. Okay, so if you watched the previous lesson, you'll know what the setup is to complete the exercises. I'll put a link to this gist in the description below. And the first thing, if you just copy the array onto your clipboard and then go straight into your developer tools and paste that in there, you'll have the array available to you so you can start working through the exercises, which are just below the array in the gist. Of course, you don't have to use the console. Feel free to use your text editor or wherever else you can run JavaScript and feel free to go through the exercises one by one first, or you can either follow along or skip to the various solutions if you get stuck when you're doing them yourself. Okay, so the data we've got in our orders array is fairly simple, although it does have one nested array, which is the items the customer has ordered. But other than that, it's fairly straightforward. So let's get started with exercise one. So the first exercise is to get a list of the orders for the customer with the ID of 234 that have not been delivered. So with our array, we want to remove any orders that don't have a customer ID of 234 and where the delivered property is false. So probably the best array method to use for this is filter. And it's simply a matter of plugging in those requirements for the exercise to filter for the customer ID and delivered properties. And don't forget the filter function just expects you to return a true or false value. So you can make any type of Boolean expression that you like up in here. So then we can add in the additional delivered property, which itself returns true or false. And don't forget we wanted to get the orders that haven't been delivered. So let's just negate the order.delivered property, which you can see just gives us the one result. And we can verify that it's correct by checking the customer ID and the delivered property in the array that's returned. So that's pretty much it for exercise one, fairly straightforward. And let's move on to exercise two. So this exercise is to create a new property on each order with the value of the total price of the items that have been ordered. So we did something a little bit similar in the first lesson with the people array. And because we're adding a new property, we want to call it the map function. So for each order in the array, we're actually going to return a new object and we want to keep the existing properties. So we'll use the spread operator to put the rest of the order back into that object. And then we're going to create that new total price property and I'll just call it order total in this example. So in order to get the total for the orders, we need to actually loop through that items array that's inside the order object and sum up all of the prices that are inside there. So anytime when we want to get a single value, we can use the reduce function, which contains the accumulator and each individual item that we're looking at. So to get our single value, we simply want to return the value that's stored in the accumulator plus the value that's inside the item price. And we'll set an initial value of that to zero. So here you can now see that each order in the array has got an additional property called order total. And if we just check the value of the items in this particular order, you can see that 55 and 30 is totaled up at 85. So even though that process is fairly straightforward, it's just a good example of how you can use the JavaScript array methods together to produce a more complex result. So let's move on to exercise three, which is to answer a simple question of have all of the orders been delivered? So there are a few different options that you've got here. You could potentially use the filter function to filter out all of the orders that have a delivered property of true. And if there's anything left in what's returned, in other words, you end up with an array that has more than one value in it, you know that some of the items haven't been delivered. You could also possibly use the reduce function as well, but there is a convenient method in JavaScript which will do this for you. So the every function works in a similar way to filter in that for every item in the array you return a true or false value, but the every function actually returns true or false as an overall result as long as it doesn't get any false values. So we already know that there's one order that hasn't been delivered from exercise one, and that's confirmed with the result that we get from the every function response. If all the orders in the array did have a delivered property of true, then the result of our every function would then be true as well. So although this could have been done with the other methods, the every function is a convenient way for this particular scenario. So let's have a look at exercise four. So for exercise four, we need to find out if the customer that has a customer ID of one, two, three, have they actually made any orders or not? 
So the same comments for the previous exercise apply to this. You could use the filter or reduce functions to achieve this, but JavaScript also provides us with another convenient function called sum. So whereas with the every function, every item in the array needs to match the condition that you provide, with the sum function, as long as one of the items in the array matches the condition, you'll get a true value back. So here, just providing a boolean expression inside of the sum function, to check whether any orders have a customer ID set of 123, we get a true response back, so we know that the customer with the ID of 123 has actually made at least one order. Of course, if we wanted to find out how many orders the customer had made, we could use the same logic with the filter function to get the actual number of orders that are in the array that match for customer ID 123. So let's have a look at the final exercise, exercise 5, which is probably the trickiest of all the exercises because we need to say have any products with an ID of 123 been sold. So if you were to use a for loop this would be fairly straightforward, you could just loop through the items that are in the orders array and in turn inside that loop check through each of the items that are in the items array for each order and just set the value of a variable or use a return statement if you're inside a function if we get a match for a product ID of 123. But as we're looking at JavaScript array methods in this lesson, let's have a go at solving this solution with a few of those array functions. So one possible solution would be to use the reduce function. And inside that to actually reduce the items array for each order to return the number of products that match the product ID of 123. And from that inner reduce, I'm going to return the accumulator and also just a Boolean condition to check whether the product ID has been matched. I'll set an initial value to the inner reduce at zero and for the outer reduce as well, I'll set that to a value of zero too. And we just have a typo here because we were actually looking at an order inside here. So this actually tells us that there are two items that are inside the nested items arrays in, inside our orders. So we can definitely say that we have sold some products with an ID of 123. And although this solution works, you'll probably agree that it's starting to look a little bit messy with our nested calls to those JavaScript array methods. So if you haven't already, why not try some of the other more specific array methods like every or some to see if you can solve exercise 5 to give back a true or false value once you've checked all of the items for all of the orders in the array. And if you do come up with a different solution for exercise 5, or indeed any of the other exercises, feel free to post them in a comment below. It's always good to see other people's points of view on how you approach and solve different problems. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found that useful to go through some more exercises around JavaScript array methods. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so that you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates.